Castle's recently released Cobra 8 is an awesome, if slightly overpriced ESC, but it actually had a pretty major problem. In today's video, we're gonna see if they fixed it. When coupled with a censored motor, the ESC worked just fine, but when you ran this censored motor on sensorless or ran a sensorless motor, which most RTR RC cars come with, it had some pretty significant problems. Unlike a brushed motor where the physical design of the motor is what creates the timing for the energy to actually go through the windings in the motor and spin the rotor, a brushless motor relies on electronic timing and a censored motor creates that timing through a series of sensors. These three little black chips are the actual sensors and then there are magnets on this rotor that tell these chips the position of the rotor at any given time. A sensorless motor doesn't have those chips or those magnets and it relies on something called back EMF to tell this ESC where that rotor is. Because this ESC has a 32-bit processor, I'm assuming they had to recreate that programming for how it reads that back EMF and it didn't quite work properly. I'm going to show you what that looked like with this V2 EXB Creighton with the stock Spectrum sensorless motor, but before we do that, we need to fix this wing mount. This new V2 wing mount definitely is stronger than the previous version, but as you can see here, it still is breakable. Fortunately, it's not terribly expensive and it doesn't take too long to replace. We've just got about eight screws in the back here and then a couple screws in the front. And then we just need to swap the wing itself over. You always want to make sure you inspect your screws before putting them back in. Sometimes, as in this case, they'll pick up plastic from the threads. And if you don't clean that plastic out, that will probably completely wipe out the threads of what it's being screwed into next time you put it back in. Usually you can just unscrew them like that. Okay, let's go verify that this ESC still has that same problem before we try to fix it. So as you can see, if you accelerate slowly, it works fine. The problem comes in when you accelerate quickly, you can see it tends to fall on its face. And that doesn't just happen when accelerating from a stop. If you go to take a jump and accelerate off that jump, it'll do a front flip because it falls on its face too. Let me show you that again. If I hold down the throttle, you can really see the problem. Now you might say that's just classic cogging due to gearing or another problem, but let me explain why it isn't. On a sensorless system, the ESC has to start moving the motor before it knows where that rotor position is. And cogging occurs when it's not able to move the rotor fast enough to determine where that rotor is, and it'll cause the motor to shudder from a standstill. The thing is that cogging only occurs from a standstill because once the motor's spinning, the ESC is getting that signal and won't have that problem. As you saw, we had this problem from speed as well as from a standstill, so it's not classic cogging. Now let's see if updating this firmware fixes it. To go along with this new 32-bit ESC, we have a new 32-bit programmer that is USB-C instead of micro USB. I had several people ask me if these new programmers as well as the new version 2 software works with older ESCs. Let's find out real quick. I've got a Castle Copperhead 10 in this Omni Terminator. And we'll go ahead and plug the programmer in. As you can see, it's recognized. Now let's plug it into the car. And look at that, it does work. I'm actually kind of surprised. I figured it wouldn't work with the older ESCs. Now, it works with this Copperhead 10. That doesn't mean it'll work with every older version ESC, but I bet that it will. All right, now let's go ahead and plug in this Cobra 8. We'll go to the software tab. And as you can see, version 1.14 of the firmware is available. Let's go ahead and get that installed. And there we go. It doesn't look like anything has changed as far as the settings are concerned. We still got some pretty neat things in here, such as really comprehensive data logging that actually has a rolling log, so you don't have to clear it and don't lose your most current logs. The ability to use another channel on your receiver to make programming changes to it, and a bunch of really nice things that you don't get with other ESCs. All right, let's go see if this is fixed. Moment of truth, let's see if it's fixed. Oh yeah, it feels pretty good. <laughs> Give her a few more tries. That feels really good. Oh yeah, she's got power. Let's try a jump real quick. Yeah, I think she's pretty good. That brief test worked pretty well, but I don't want to say this is fixed without giving it a full bash. So let's go.
All right, guys, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you get subscribed. We do deep technical dives all the time on things, and you're not gonna wanna miss what's coming in the future. That being said, this thing seems to be fixed. Everything's working well on it. I would say the initial acceleration isn't quite as explosive as I would expect it to be from a Castle product, but there are settings you can change to help that as long as your batteries can handle it. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Now that this has been fixed, will you pick up one of these for your 6S applications or are you still going for that MMX 8S? I'd love to hear from you and I'd love for you to subscribe, then check out one of these.